get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. I haven't given him much thought, you know, with training camp being so busy and consuming so much of our time. So I'm, I'm not too concerned about it. A little, little icy exchange there. It's Kevin Seifert back on the Vikings beat. He used to be your cohort at the Star Tribune back in the day covering one of the best. Those Vikings teams. He is an excellent, excellent football beat writer. And yes. uh, he took over for Courtney Cronin, who's now not only covering the Bears, but all over like first take and it's awesome to see yeah. that. Uh, around the horn and all, all just, oh, yeah. just crushing it. So good to see CeCe uh, taking a step in her career. But yeah, that was, you know, there's been a lot. We, and we talked about some of the stuff on the last couple days of Purple Daily and Mackie and Judd. Just some of the the interesting comments from Quasey and even Justin Jefferson, both walking back the comments that they made. But, you know, they said what they said. So um, if you want deeper dives into those controversial, dramatic things, those clickbaity things, then you can check out the Thursday and Friday episodes of Purple Daily and Mackie and Judd. But uh, this is Purple Daily Reads the Comments here. Every single week we take a couple episodes and dive into the comments section of YouTube, the feedback tab on the Score North app. You can always send us messages, and the show is presented by our friends at TCL, where uh, they make not only great television sets for you to watch shows like Purple Daily on, but they also redefine creativity with the TCL 30V 5G smartphone. Enjoy blazing fast 5G speed in an AI-powered 50 megapixel triple camera system. Football. Ultra realistic and true to life visuals powered by Next Vision and booming sound from the dual speakers. Learn more at TCL.com. All right, boys, let's start with this one here from Donovan Germain via the Score North app. I heard Quasi say in his press conference earlier this week that he will say less moving forward. Laugh out loud. Congrats to sports media for already turning Quasi into a GM who just sticks to cliches and generalized <laughs> answers. Your thoughts. Well, it's your fault. Okay. The USA Today reporter <laughs> asked a question, got what is Quasi's philosophy on QBs, which I think we all agree with. Um, he didn't like how it sounded related to Kirk Cousins, which, you know, in defense of the reporter, she was just basically quoting him on, on what his thoughts were about the position. Um, so I really wouldn't blame the media here. I, I don't know exactly, you know, I mean, there are, look, as Quasi learned, as as Justin Jefferson learned when it, it comes to what he said about Kirk electing not to join him in Florida for some throwing, whenever you say a thing about a quarterback, especially a starting highly paid one, it's going to generate headlines. That's just life in 2022. There's no blame there. It goes with the position and the job. So, yeah, I would not, I don't think it's fair to say congratulations to the press for this. I think it is a learning curve, especially for Quazy, who's new. Like he was the second guy in Cleveland. Nobody quoted him. And now he's going to be quoted. And yes, there is a responsibility that when you probably talk about your head coach, quarterback, high profile people, it's going to be reported fairly quickly and i don't think that this is a problem with the reporter i think that this is just how you learn about how things are going to be processed through the media yeah i also i mean what he said was interesting it's interesting fodder it's a glimpse behind the curtain at at his beliefs and his truth now i will say donovan germain the commenter here continued all the articles purposely creating controversy by twisting his meaning no one twisted his meaning he used the words we when describing what we have. We what yeah. we don't have a Brady. We don't have a Mahomes. I mean, he was right, but but he. I think he's going a little over the top. I think he felt bad about what he said. Yeah. And I hate it when people say something, they said it, and then they blame the media for twisting something. Well, no, like you said it, and that's fine. Right. But uh, just to continue the comment here, if there's one thing Judd pieced together early this offseason, it's that the Wilfs deemed everything regarding Cousins off-limits, only sunshine and rainbows allowed. 
The only thing Kwesi was trying to say is that even if you don't have a megastar quarterback, you need to think twice about burning down the quarterback spot if your QB is still very good. Oh, yeah. You can ruin a team for years by trying to find the next Brady or Mahomes. So he's saying there's definitely a right time to do that. And that is correct. Mm-hmm. That and I and and I don't think this is this is what I was saying a few months back is that I think we fear oh my god if you move off a good not great quarterback be careful what you wish for and what I would say in return is and again it's not going to happen now for a couple of years but whenever that time does come whether it's in 2 years or 5 years whenever the Vikings and Kirk Cousins part ways think about how many garbage quarterbacks or or non elite quarterbacks the Vikings have ridden or dragged to the playoffs there's a lot of ways to win 9, 10, 11 games. They've done it with T-Jack. They've done it with Farratt. They've done it with a second-year Teddy Bridgewater. Um, Christian Ponder, they won 10 games with Christian Bleep and Ponder. Case Keenum, a 13-win season with Case Keenum. So I think, again, it's not going to happen for a few more years, but this fear of like, well, you better be careful. You better be careful. I mean, the Titans picked up a broken Ryan Tannehill, and they went on to be one of the best teams in the AFC for three or four years. So now are they going to win a Super Bowl at Tannehill? No. But there are plenty of ways to go about sort of moving on from Kirk Cousins if and whenever that happens. Absolutely. Uh, T. Kubler on YouTube says, Fire Quasi, he's already a disruption to the team. <laughs> oh, man. How, from what you've heard, how is this? Is this all being kind of looked at as like, ah, whatever he... Got a little squirrely in an interview, and or are, are people? Is there anyone that you can tell that's actually chapped at the way this thing kind of blew up? The USA Today article. Oh boy, you know what? We we don't really see the people above crazy, so I don't know if like the, the Wilfs were chapped. Possibly, um, I just don't know. But no, I mean, I think that look, what he said is completely fair, and and if you are being honest with yourself, he spoke the truth. So will he speak the truth again? Probably not. But yeah. that that comment was a very fair comment. And I understand the fear that he has and fans have, which is if you trade Kirk or go away from Kirk, that there is going to be risk there. But that's the whole point of the job. Like the entire point of the job is taking that, that risk. If you say to yourself, oh my God, I cannot uh, cut or trade Kirk ever because I don't know then you can't have this job. Sean N. via the Score North app says, understand that Justin Jefferson will be a great wide receiver in the NFL, but colleges are starting to turn out top-tier wide receivers at an accelerated rate. At $34 million per year, that's an expensive cap hit for one position other than the quarterback. Uh, with the yeah. th- with with the throw, for, he might have a misspelling here. Uh, the ideal situation for the Vikings is extend, extended Jefferson, draft the next franchise quarterback, extend Jefferson, draft the next franchise quarterback, and then trade Jefferson before his value depletes for a first, second, and a fifth. The top three positions continue to be quarterback, edge rusher, and left tackle. And then I'll add this one because it's part of a greater discussion. Uh-huh. Uh, Nels73 on YouTube says, so you go from saying you can't pay a quarterback a certain percentage of the salary cap and win a Super Bowl, and yet you're saying you can pay Justin Jefferson the same percentage and win one? It makes no sense. Let me clarify one thing here, and then we can discuss sure. what's going to be a huge contract at some point for Justin Jefferson. To this point, no individual quarterback taking up more than 13% of the salary cap has ever won a Super Bowl. Now, the Rams last year had a bunch of Jared Goff dead cap and Matthew Stafford, who was under that percentage. But when you add those two up, the Rams actually were the first team to go over that threshold. Mm -hmm. So historically, it's been very difficult, if not impossible, to win a Super Bowl with a quarterback taking up that much money. And so, yes, I would be careful about paying a receiver a similar percentage to the salary cap as well. It is definitely a thing. you got to be careful. But the problem is with quarterbacks and with these receivers, it's it's kind of a binary decision. There is no middle ground. It's either here's what you pay, figure out a way to make it work, or say goodbye to that player. Maybe you can trade him for draft picks, right? right? And so I guess what I'm saying is even knowing how hard it is to win a Super Bowl with one player making that percentage, I think there's a difference between paying top dollar for the best receiver in the NFL Correct. and then making it work versus the 14th best quarterback in the league, and they're paying the third highest cap hit and making that work. 
And that's the key. That's the entire key there. Yeah, you are. When when we're talking about what Jefferson appears on track to become, by the end of the season, he might very well be the best at what he does in the best league in the world. Kirk Cousins is never going to, to come close. Um, now, does that mean that that Jefferson, I, I think, would be in as well on restructures and trying to help out? Jefferson strikes me as much more of a to flat out say it a team type of player like i think he wants a championship i think that he is i mean kirk kirk's championship and this is where i think people like get confused or don't don't want to discuss it if they're uh cousins crusaders kirk's championship is his contract it's fully Mm -hmm. guaranteed in a league and by the way good for him but it's fully it was fully guaranteed in 2018 that made him the first quarterback Think about this for a second. In NFL history, to have a fully guaranteed contract, okay? So there's a lot of things at work here that go beyond just the flat-out payday discussion. But when you are talking about a receiver who has the opportunity to be the best at what he does, number one, that to me is a lot. Like, if you told me at the end of the season, I think Kirk Cousins is going to be the best quarterback in this league. Mahomes, Brady, Rodgers, all of them behind Kirk. My opinion of Kirk totally changes. Yeah, and I think too, like so Patrick Mahomes, for instance, because he is willing to sign a ten year contract, it gave the Chiefs the flexibility last now they didn't obviously they didn't cash in and win a Super Bowl last year, but they said, Okay, year one of this contract, actually let's let's take some of that cap down to seven million, shuffle it into future seasons and get go get you a right guard and go bring in a left tackle, et cetera, and just have flexibility. I think I would actually have been much less critical of Kirk over these last four years if he had just signed initially a five-year contract, which yeah. he didn't want to, I don't think. I think he's always wanted the one- or two-year contracts, or in the, the first one, it was a three-year guarantee contract. If he signed something that was more flexible for the team to be able to move money around. And that's what I'm curious about Justin Jefferson. Will he sign something that's three years and largely ironclad, and it gives the Vikings very little room to say, hey... We think we can pop this year. We need some cap flexibility. Let's move some money around. Or is it going to be like a five or a six year deal where you can do some of that? Yes. You know, because that, that'll make a You're big right. difference too. So, uh, all right, before we get to the, the next batch of feedback from our listeners here, scrolling through the comments section, let's talk about our friends at Brainerd International Raceway, Dex. That's right. So, Brainerd International Raceway has Moto America this week, and that's happening right now. But on August 28th through the 21st, get ready. There's more coming to Brainerd International Raceway. It's the Lucas Oil Nationals. It's coming to Brainerd International Raceway. Ground pounding, lightning fast, blow your mind, drag racing. 330 miles per hour. And every ticket comes with a pit pass. And kids 12 and under get in free. And with that pit pass, fans can watch uh, teams tear down their race cars, rebuild them. Uh, you can stand within feet. You can just feel, right, that that smell and burn of nitrile fuel just right down into your nostrils. It's a great time. Brain International Raceway, go check them out August 28th, excuse me, August 18th through the 21st. Visit BIRMN.com for tickets. And we're celebrating the summer of Surly here. Training camp equals peak summer, and summer of Surly is in full swing, Judd. Uh, that's exactly right. And today is a special day because it's an SSS. What's that? Summer of Surly Saturday, which means there's only one option. Get to your, if you if you don't have, you know, Furious or, or Supremes or a Logic Bomb in your fridge right now, get to the, to your, liquor store as soon as possible and stock up because a summer of surly saturday you know what if you if it's just an ss that's no good you need the surly too so make sure that you partake in the best time of the year not only is football starting but surly beer available to you to enjoy your saturday boom all right, Tyler Sternhagen love love comments like this he's uh, via the scorner app he says i've been a viking fan from birth but was a casual fan at best. And then I found Purple Daily about a year ago on YouTube and haven't missed a show since. You guys honestly give me a daily study period and have vastly boosted my knowledge of the Vikings. I work with a couple other Vikings fans, and due to the show, I am now the go-to guy for any info or validate the rumors <laughs> that may that uh, that guys may have heard. 
So you're basically the, the cl- your friends go to you for clickbait is what happens here. I'd love like. to hear this. This is great news. Side note, tell Sports Dad I'm from Dubuque, Iowa. Was even in Dyersville the weekend that Judd was down for uh, for his wedding a couple weekends ago. I wish I could have met him and got a picture to hang up in my man cave. If he's ever back down here, I'd mean the world if I could uh, cheers him for a beer. Love the show. Thank you, guys. Uh, awesome. See, I don't know, Judd might not be able to actually oh, you know meet what? up with you in person. but in Dyersville, you know. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's grab a beer. I like this idea. All right, Derek Vetter via the Scorner Thaps says, Love the show, but I have a suggestion for Write That Down. You guys should be keep tra- keeping track of interceptions. Like Judd predicting Kellen Mond would be the 2022 Week 1 starter, or Declan predicting the Vikings would win by 14 points last season, Week 1 against the Bengals, Put all the stats into some sort of algorithm that spits out a total QBR for the season, and oh that's God. your winner at the end of the year. Also, I'm from Fargo. Get me in touch with Chansey in Fargo. Need to watch a game with that dude. Chansey, <laughs> uh, go into, go look up Derek Vetter, Chansey, and vice get your versa. Phone book you guys, out. Get you your guys phone should book connect out. with go each other. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a few requests for adding some sort of interception category and write that down. We've tried to keep it simple here, okay? The yeah, it's a tough. We used to keep track on on the classic version to write that down: singles, doubles, triples, and home runs. And we had so we had a slugging percentage. Yeah, it just became too much. So we just do batting average and home runs, and we do completion percentage and touchdowns. Do you guys think we should add an interception category? I think we could, because I mean th- those are atrocious predictions. But how would you? You'd have to w- see with the home runs and the touchdowns. You kind of determine at the point of the prediction. Okay, this is bold enough to warrant a touchdown later on. Right. right. Well, I think we could How would that work for that interceptions though? It would almost have to be determined at the time. At the point of the prediction coming off the board. Correct. With yes. like how how wrong you wound up being, right? But I mean, me saying Kellen Mond is going to start, like you you could say, "Whoa, Judd, that that's, that's going a, a long way." And that that could be a pick. I yeah. think it has to be also like at the time of the prediction and it also be it has to be either be the weird thing is we have to decide if, if it's a layup of a prediction and it goes wrong, should we ding it? Or if it's something just so outlandish that it can't even come close to coming true, like, would that be an interception? I don't think I, we can. I, I think it should be the first thing. I think this is what's tough because we like to make touchdown predictions, but oftentimes those touchdown predictions are way wrong. Yes. So we would wind up all having, if if we did this so that all of the predictions that are just way wrong – become interceptions. Then we're going to wind up like 1970s quarterbacks with 30 we're going to have 12 it touchdowns right. to 32 interceptions or something. Then we might look dumb. Well, <laughs> well we do that each Wednesday, twice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, if someone can present Here, I'm going to outsource this back to the audience. To you Derek and to other people. If you can come up with an actual plan a quantifiable plan for us to categorize interceptions that makes sense, we will consider it. And other categories, okay? Fair. I don't know how QBR is calculated, but it would be really fun to have some sort of all-encompassing if we had, like, yards per attempt. And- no, 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 no. Now that's way too much. <laughs> we should keep it simple. You're right. We want, we want, yeah, we want, like, casual listeners to get it, too. Otherwise, yes. it gets too in the weeds. Yes. So, all right, Todd Hammer via YouTube says, why isn't anyone talking about Ezra Cleveland being bad? He should be replaced this year too. He's kind of listen. Here's the thing: he's Ezra Cleveland's basically a league average left guard at this point, with upside. Right. He's still pretty young. He's like 25 years old, right? And he was a second round draft pick. You're not going to have perfect starters across the board. You're gonna with with a salary cap and a couple players making big money. You're going to have to choose some of the positions that you just skate by on. And for the Vikings, ideally long term, those things aren't. Left tackle. There are certain positions, much like toilet paper, you don't want to skimp on, okay? No, don't go single play. Got to be careful. Guard? I know guard's been historically a franchise problem, but, you know, it's the position that, in theory, you should be able to skimp a little bit. Although, when you have a non-mobile quarterback, it makes it harder. But I think, like, if if Ezra Cleveland's a league average left guard... I'm not just going to replace him. I think I, I'm I'm okay with that. Let me go spend money on a cornerback. Yeah, you know, agree. Spend money on Justin agree. Jefferson in a couple of years. You know. Yes, yes. I am far, far more concerned about Bradbury than Cleveland right now. And Cleveland could be improving too. And I don't think he was the problem. So like, I I think calling him bad is way too far. 
Now, if he goes backwards and there's problems there, yes, absolutely, he can be replaced at some point in time. But when I think of the 2022 first-team offensive line, my immediate thoughts of concern go to one position, and that's center. Garrett Bradbury, it scares me. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's accurate. So, uh, okay, there's your dive into the comments section here. Just a little quick episode of Purple Daily today, and we'll have Judd's boots and ears on the ground at Vikings training camp throughout uh, the coming weeks here. So yep. we are your place for Vikings training camp updates, speculation, and clickbait here. We are the buzz factory at Score North buzz and Purple factory. Daily. Buzz factory. Ooh, buzz, buzz factory. factory. That's right. Buzz factory. Daily oh, buzz Vikings factory. entertainment. Yeah. Give me the buzz. See you guys.